Um, I want to welcome you to the website. Thanks for stopping by. I also want to welcome you to today's lesson. Uh, we're going to be wor working on Eric Johnson's Cliffs of Dover for arranged for solo acoustic guitar. And uh, the tablature is available on my website. You can download it for free. Uh, so get the tab, watch the lesson, watch how I'm doing the fingerings on the, the, uh, the, the neck. Um, and take your time, take it slow, practice it. It's going to take you a while because it's a challenging arrangement, but it's well worth your effort because your friends are going to be amazed that you can pull this off by yourself. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, let's get to work. Uh, the tuning that I'm using isn't open tuning. It's C, G, D, G, B, D. And that's laid out in the tablature so you'll understand. C, G, D, G, B, D. Okay, so let's get started. The opening lick of the tune, very important. You notice I took it down an octave um, because it just it was just too hard to make it sound right on the acoustic guitar starting way up here. So I did it down here instead. Let's do that lick again because I think you need to, to work on that. You're going to have to stretch a little bit. Then here's the famous lick. Now you notice I, I changed up some of the notes that he chose for his big rundown. He, he starts way up here like on 17 and then does a pentatonic thing all the way down the neck. Problem was is because I started down here it didn't make much sense to come all the way up here and then play all the way down. And so I had to keep the phrase about the same. I just changed a couple of the notes. And if you play it fast enough no one knows the difference anyway. <laughs> so, um, so here's that, that lick again. Then the tune starts. Uh, you notice I, I didn't, for this arrangement, I didn't play it in the traditional way that Eric plays it on the electric guitar when you watch him play. Instead, I played it in kind of an open position so I could let more of the open strings ring. And this was the approach, so it went like this. <laughs> Notice that I, because the melody is played way up here in the regular tune, I wanted to kind of imply that, but I had to jump down an octave, so this is on the, and I like the ringing of the open strings, so played with the harmonics. And because this is a shuffle tune, uh, and it's a fast shuffle tune, which is I think the most challenging part of the tune, is, is playing it at speed, keeping the shuffle feel going. Um, I use a little ba bass technique here to imply the shuffle, and I'll do it on this camera so you can see it. Between my thumb and my forefinger. To and I did that to imply the shuffle every so often, so people were reminded, okay, do ba do ba do ba do ba And so make sure you work that into, it's on the arrangement, it's on the tab, you'll be able to tell. Anyway, so it goes like this. next section, I think it's an important thing to point out. A lot of the times in this arrangement you'll see the grip that I'm using 
is more of a, a blues type of uh, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan type of grip uh, where your palm is, or this part of your hand right here is, is on the neck as opposed to a traditional classical technique where your thumb is directly behind the neck and there's space between the neck and your hand. I use that sometimes, but you know, with this, because I'm, I'm reaching a, a, across the top a lot uh, to grab bass notes with my thumb, um, you know, I incorporate this technique some. And remember, there's, there's no right or wrong with, with guitar technique. It's just whatever makes the music work. Okay, so that's uh, kind of how I've always thought about it. So incorporate that into your playing if you've never done it before, and then uh, you'll certainly be, it'll certainly be very helpful for this arrangement. Anyway, so, uh, so watch my thumb, make sure, watch how it gets the bass notes on this section, and here we go. back to this melody. Shuffle. Now before we get into this thing, this is an important part of the tune is that I think the hardest thing to do in the whole piece is to play this line right. Hopefully I'll be able to play it right now. I would say slow it down and, and make sure you get it because if you can play through this tune, it really is some sophistication uh, in the writing that he did for this little melody in the tune. And I think it's an important piece. So it goes like this. And so slow that way down. Then back to the melody. Now we're going to go back to the hook of the tune, which is the two five one six progression. about that lick. Um, what makes this challenging is it's just triplets but notice watch what my thumb does here in the bass on this E note. I, I wanted to always imply that bass so I went and then moving on And this is where the, 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 the tune kind of opens up a little bit. Um, and you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm going just from the G note to the C string just to, for a little bit of interest and movement in the bass line. And I'll do a little attack just to kind of give it a different feel. Slow this down so you can see how I'm fingering it. And it moves on. thing. I changed up what he played, what Eric played, just a little bit to make it make sense for this tuning once again. There were um, some, some things where I did that during the song. It's just, it had to be done. Anyway, it goes like this. And then, 
here's this next section, which is the great part of the tune where it really comes in there, really kicking. And so I wanted to imply what the drum was doing. And so I, I incorporated this technique that you guys see a lot on YouTube that a lot of people are using as part of their arrangement style or their writing style. And it's with the percussive right hand playing the snare drum uh, on two and four. And the challenging part of this is because there's a lot going on uh, in the uh, in the melody, so you're constantly having to play downbeats on two and four with the this part of your right hand to keep the percussive technique going. So um, just keep that in mind, and I'll try to play it slowly so you can see uh, what I'm doing. And I'll, I'll show you my left hand, then we'll go back and play the same thing, and I'll show you what my right hand is doing, okay? So... Okay, then I'll get into that in a second, but I'm going to play it for you again and show you how I'm, how I'm using my right hand. time slow that down and, and work on trying to play that as groovy as you can so now to the flash lick of the song uh, it's all triplets with a couple of 18 or 16th notes sprinkled in and then um, what I want to do is always imply the bass like I talked about earlier so which makes it a little tricky and challenging to, to play this at speed so slow it down and use these fingerings and you should be able to get it And it's slow. One more time. Okay, moving on. And just follow the tab, it'll tell you exactly what to play there. Uh, I kind of let the right hand uh, percussion thing kind of fade away at that point in the tune because there was so much that had to go on, you had to make some concession to, to try to play all the notes. Um, anyway, moving on to the last uh, 2 5 one, six hook part, it goes like this. Same pattern. talk about that. So this is a technique that uh, I love and I got it uh, from playing all those tunes, uh, writing all of those original pieces uh, that were inspired by, inspired by guys like Michael Hedges and Billy McLaughlin. And in the original Cliffs of Dover he plays the, the, the melody here. Then he goes up another octave to play it higher at that point in the song. Well I was playing it down here so I needed to imply going up that octave, I just couldn't play it up here and keep the bass going at the same time. So the, the solution that I came up with was to apply this technique, which is the two-hand thing, where you put your hand and thumb in the back of the neck and play it like this.
if you're able to do that, then that's going to open up a whole new world for you writing your own original pieces too. So I would really suggest checking it out. Uh, a minor, G, D with an F sharp in the bass, G, D with F sharp in the bass, E minor. Then the rest of the tune goes like this. Now before I do this last lick, let's talk about it. Uh, it's just something where it starts really high and I, I wanted to play these notes, but I, I want, you always want to make things as easy as you can. Uh, even if it's a hard arrangement, make it a, uh, an easy version of that. And so for me, that meant uh, incorporating some of my old Van Halen techniques. Even though Eric Johnson doesn't do this in his original version, this is the solution that I came up with playing way up here on the acoustic guitar neck. And so the last lick, really slowly, goes like this. Do it one more time, even slower, so you can get it. All right, so that's uh, my arrangement of Eric Johnson's Cliffs of Dover. Uh, for solo acoustic guitar and uh, remember uh, slow it way down uh, get it under your fingers then work on playing that shuffle groove very slowly this type of tempo you know really slowly and then work it up to speed because if you try to jump in and, and play this tune at 180 or 190 or whatever the recording is, um, it, it's just you're just going to get really frustrated. So don't do that. Be patient with yourself, and before you know it, you'll have it under your fever, people under your fingers, and people are going to be like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe he's playing that." So um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Uh, thanks for stopping by RedButler.org, and look forward to playing for you soon. Thanks, guys. <laughs>